Hey, what's up guys? Nick here with a review for the newest in the line of DC animated feature films, Batman Bad Blood. Now, this film directly follows up the events of Son of Batman and Batman vs. Robin, keeping up with the New 52 universe that they've kind of built up towards now. Basically, what I've seen in the film and what I know of the comic books, this kind of takes inspiration from a number of different storylines, and that kind of is a little bit of my complaints, but I'll go into that later. The storylines that I saw featured here were Batman R.I.P. Batwoman Elegy, uh, the Grant Morrison New 52 Batman Incorporated stuff, and a little bit of Battle for the Cowl type of like the Dick Grayson taking over the Cowl stuff. But yeah, so anyways, the story here takes place right after Batwoman and Batman had an encounter with the Electrocutioner and some goons, and a new villain comes in that they've never seen before, but he claims to know Batman. So then he proceeds to kill Batman as we see, and Batwoman believes that Batman is dead, and basically the rest of the Bat family have to come together and find out what happened to Bruce Wayne, where he's at, and how to deal with this new threat that has emerged. That's the gist of the story. I don't want to go in too far into spoiler territory with what happens. There's a lot of twists and turns and a lot of character appearances that we see in the film. But overall, what did I think of it? I thought it was actually a pretty solid step up from what I've seen before. I mean, we had Justice League War and Justice League Throne of Atlantis, which were kind of mediocre at best. Uh, Throne of Atlantis I liked a little bit more than War, but they weren't really up to to standards of the old DC animated films. I mean, they just didn't have that kind of quality about them. I think it's probably largely in part due to the art style and the just general jumbled stories that they all have seem to have. They just really quickly rush through things and don't really explain anything. Just all kinds of action and fast-paced stuff in there. But I thought this one did a really good job at giving a lot of character development and a, a lot of quieter moments. Uh, Dick Grayson was awesome in this movie. I thought the voice actor that uh, portrayed him did a fine job. Same with Batwoman. I love uh, Yvonne Strahovski and I think she did a pretty good job as uh, Kate Kane and I'm glad to see that Batwoman is getting a little bit more put in into the spotlight in terms of media and uh, entertainment stuff. That's awesome to see. And it's cool that they stayed pretty much faithful to all those comic books uh, storylines that I listed. You know, the, it largely in part, I think a lot of these Batman inspired films like Son of Batman and Batman vs. Robin, they were directly inspired by Grant Morrison's uh, run on the Batman character, as well as some elements mixed in, like the last film had the Court of Owls, so that was kind of inspired by the Scott Snyder New 52 stuff as well, but mostly they're taking from the Grant Morris and stuff, but twisting it a little bit to incline with the New 52 uh, universe they're building. But overall, I thought this was a pretty good movie. Uh, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10, a solid movie that has some cool action beats and a lot of funny, great character moments and nods to the comic books. Just the source material, like it's great for any fans of Batman, Batwoman, Dick Grayson especially, because he's pretty much the central star of this uh, movie, and it turns out that it's really his story by the end of the film. And yeah, just overall, I thought I had a good time watching it, and I definitely would check it out again. I do want to say that there is a pretty big spoiler kind of I guess as parents. Um, this is going to be the only spoiler that I'm going to talk about in the review but uh, Batgirl appears in the movie at the very end of the movie so I'm guessing they're setting up another film in which she's going to come into the spotlight in Gotham City but I thought it was kind of neat because the way that they animated her it looked like the current Batgirl that's drawn by Babs Tar. So that was also cool to see and yeah uh, overall pretty enjoyable fun film. I highly recommend it to any fans of DC Entertainment that has kind of been longing for a better DC animated movie. But anyways, if you guys got a chance to watch the film, uh, let me know what you guys thought down in the comments below, and be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all of our latest reviews, news, podcasts, and other original content. My name is Nick, and I will see you guys next time.